Kylie, welcome to the studio. I am so excited because where I live right now, it is autumn and I love autumn crafts. I love leaves, I love pumpkins. It is so fun that today I'm gonna show you a new craft that's fun for all ages and we're gonna remember some of the best pumpkin and leaf and fall crafts that we've made together over the years. Oh, I'm so excited, let's make it. For our craft today, you are going to need some air dry clay. I'm using some that's this terracotta color, look. I'm using this because it reminded me of the color of pumpkins and leaves. You don't have to use this color if you don't want to. There's all kinds of different air dry clay colors, or you could use Play-Doh. You could even make your own Play-Doh or salt dough at home. Whatever, it's all good. I'm gonna start by rolling my clay into a ball. Cool. Now I'm gonna press it down a little bit with my hand, and then I'm gonna use a rolling pin. Now I have kind of an ovaly shape, or one may argue, the shape of a pumpkin. You can use a cookie cutter for this if you have a pumpkin cookie cutter, but if you don't, don't worry about it. Things in nature are not perfect. Look at this pumpkin. It's so cute, but it's not perfectly round. It's not perfectly symmetrical. There's lines and little rough spots and weird bumps. And actually, it's the things in nature and art that aren't perfect that sometimes is exactly what makes it so cool. Next, I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna just cut out a little stem. There you go. This is already looking so cool. There's lots of things we could do now. We could use our pencil or cookie cutters to cut out little uh, faces maybe, like a jack-o'-lantern, some triangles, and maybe a mouth with like one tooth. Or I could roll a coil of clay and score it with my pencil. Score just means make these little marks that kind of rough the clay up a little bit. That's because when this clay dries, if there's nothing rough to attach it, if it gets any pressure, it'll just fall right off because it'll be really smooth like this. We're gonna rough it up so that the roughed up pieces can latch together so when it dries, it stays together. Once you score your coil, then you can score your pumpkin. and use your coil to decorate it. I could finish doing that all the way around like this. Or another option is to take some beans and seeds. These are beans and seeds that we use for in a sensory tray at my house, which means we can kind of dig around, sort them out, play with them. They've been touched a lot. Don't really want to eat them, but I can craft with them. And I can take these and press them right into my clay in like a cool design. These are actually pumpkin seeds that I'm using right now. You can make patterns, you can make designs, or you could just do whatever you want. That would look cool too. I'm gonna make some of each. Okay, this is like really fun. I've made lots of different patterns and textures and I think I'm gonna keep going. If you need to smooth out your air dry clay at all, if it's starting to crack, you can just use a little bit of water in your finger and smooth it right out. While we wait for these to dry so we can put on some finishing touches, check out some of my favorite fall crafts you and I have made together throughout the years. Don't forget, stick around to the end of the video to see the finished product. Let's make it. Hi friend, it's me, Kylie. I am so excited you're here. It's a beautiful fall day outside right now and I'm so excited to go play. I wanna go on the swings, I wanna go on the slide. Do you want to? Yeah, let's do it. Was that you? Me, down here. Huh. That voice kind of sounded like it was coming from the maker box. <laughs> Should we check it out? Okay. It is like almost Halloween time. Halloween! <laughs> I wonder if there's something spooky in here. Do you think? Oh. Only one way to find out. At least we're together. Hello? Ouch! Was that a ghost? A nice one. I think it 
was. Okay. I wonder if it's friendly. I am! Oh, all right. Let's let it out then. Finally. Oh! You're so cute! Thank you. Hi, little ghost. Hi. Come out of there. Look at this guy. You look very friendly. You do. Do you think you would want to play with us today? Absolutely. Awesome. Before we go play with this ghost, I'm gonna show you how to make a ghost just like this with simple materials you can find at home. To the studio! Let's make it! Welcome to the studio. Are you ready to learn how to make your very own ghost friend? Yes! Here's all the things you need. A spray bottle, water, school glue, toilet paper, a paper plate, some cling wrap, plastic wrap, aluminum foil if you want it, or some odds and ends, little containers. If they're rounded on top, that's even better. The first thing I'm gonna do is mix up a water and glue mixture in my spray bottle. I'm gonna do about half and half, half water, half glue, and shake it up. Now we're gonna make the armature underneath this ghost sculpture. This is the thing that's going to hold the sculpture up until it's dry enough to hold itself up. So this is where you get to be very creative. How big do you want your ghost to be? How tall? Do you want it to be tall and thin or short and fat? It's up to you. Hmm, I think for this one, maybe I'll do this tall bottle. And yeah, that'll be the shape for the top of the head. Next, you're gonna take a piece of plastic wrap and just cover up your armature. The glue won't stick to this, so that'll let us get our ghost off of the armature once it's all dry. I'm gonna start by spraying some of this water and glue mixture over my whole armature. There we go. We'll add more as we go, but that's just gonna help our first layer stay where we put it. Time for toilet paper. <laughs> toilet paper. Break off a section and just drape it over your armature. Keep doing that until your whole armature is covered. Now that you have one layer of toilet paper down, you're gonna use your water and glue spray to, well, spray. You can use your hands to kind of smooth down the folds a little bit. And then you need to add at least one more layer of toilet paper. Between every layer, you just wanna spray it down with your glue again. That's it! Now you just need to wait about 24 hours, maybe 30, until this ghost is dry. I made some earlier this week so that I can show you the next step right now. Come on, little buddy. Once the toilet paper is all the way dry, you can take your sculpture ghost off of the armature. Watch. Boop. <laughs> it just comes right off. And because the glue hardened up, it keeps that shape. This is the armature that I had underneath this ghost. You see this little ghost? I made him kind of have an arm because I'm thinking I want him to hold something. The way that I made this armature was with tin foil. I just shaped my tin foil into a little ghost shape with a little arm, covered it in plastic wrap, and then did the same thing. Just covered that whole thing with toilet paper and glue and let it dry. Now that we took them off the armatures, we can trim the ends to look however we want them to look. You could leave them hanging so it was extra ghosty if you wanted, or you can trim it up so it's a little neater on the bottom. That's totally up to you. I'm gonna trim this a little bit. Now that your ghosts are all trimmed up, you can use paint, markers, craft foam, pom-poms, googly eyes, whatever you want to decorate their cute little faces. I'm gonna use googly eyes and hot glue because I love googly eyes and hot glue. You do too? Yes. I also made this guy a little pumpkin out of pipe cleaners. Check out this little ghost 
family. They are so cute. I love this craft. I love it because it's simple and easy and so fun. You can make a million of these. This would look so cute on a table or maybe on a shelf in your room. Or I don't know, you could just go go play. Um, hey, pst, little ghost, do you want to go play? Yes, yes. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come. I was getting ready this morning and I looked out my window and I saw this magnificent tree. Check it out. Isn't it incredible? It is the brightest, most gorgeous orange I have ever seen. It's like having the sun growing in my yard. <laughs> it makes me feel so grateful. Do you know what that word means? Grateful means you're just like, oh, thank you. Thank you, tree. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. I love you. I love that I get to share the world with you. I have an idea of what we can make today. Let's make a gratitude tree. This will be an amazing craft that'll look cool and it'll help us practice and seeing what we're thankful for. Let's do it. First thing we need to do is find some sticks. We're making a tree sculpture in miniature, so we'll use these sticks to act as the trunk of the tree and the branches. The next thing we need is a few rocks to hold down the base of our tree. I'm gonna make my tree in this can. I bought this can, but you could also use a can that food used to be in. Just make sure that an adult checks to make sure there's no sharp spots on top and you're gonna wanna wash it out pretty well so your tree doesn't smell like old green beans or something. <laughs> we have all the supplies we need out here. Let's go to the studio and make it. To the studio! The first thing I'm gonna do is to break my sticks and arrange them until they're kind of tree, tree-like. This looks good to me. Once I have it how I want it, I'm gonna put a rubber band around the very end. The rubber band will hold your branches in place while you do this next part. I'm gonna put the tree right in the middle of my can. Then I'm gonna use these rocks to create kind of a barrier all the way around it so it doesn't like flomp over so easily. There we go, that's pretty sturdy. If you wanna add even another layer of sturdiness, sturdiness, I'm gonna add some plaster of Paris into here as well. You can skip this part if you want to. Mix up your plaster of Paris according to the instructions on the package. Mine is three parts plaster to one part water. While we let this plaster of Paris set up, let's make our leaves for our gratitude tree. There are lots of amazing ways you could get really creative to make leaves for your gratitude tree. One way is have a grown-up go to kyliemakesit.com backslash kids and you can print out this printable. Then you can cut out these leaves or the shape that you like and color them in. Have people write on them just like that, whatever you want. I'm gonna show you an additional way that you can make this a little fancy and that is with paper marbling. Start with some shaving cream. Ooh, it smells really good. Fill up your pan with shaving cream and then you can kind of smooth it out a little bit. 
that part's done, you're gonna take your liquid watercolors or food dye and just put drops of it every once in a while. If you want this tree to fit in with the decorations of your house or your holiday table, just use those colors. And then, no matter what anyone makes, it'll look awesome. Once the colors are dripped in, you're gonna swirl it up. This part is so fun. Feel free to be creative. Now that that's done, however much or however little you want to mix it up, you take some paper, I'm using cardstock, and you put it right down on top. Now, squish. Then, pull it up. And now you're going to scrape all the shaving cream off of your paper, and it's going to reveal... <gasps> Let's make some more. You can use this marbled paper for so many things. You can put it in a frame just like this. It's a work of art. But today I'm using these to make leaves for my gratitude tree. So I have my printable, kyliemakesit.com backslash kids, and I'm gonna choose which shape I want the leaves on my tree to be. I'm gonna choose this one because I really like that shape. It's the shape of the leaves outside on my beautiful orange tree I showed you. So I'm gonna cut that one out. And now I'm gonna use this as a template to trace and cut out the rest of my leaves. Ta-da! Now I'm gonna cut that leaf shape out of my marbled paper. Ta-da! The leaves are ready, the tree is ready, I'm ready, watch this. Whoa, it all stays in there. That's so cool. I was a little nervous. <laughs> I'm gonna stuff a little bit of moss around the base just for decoration. Time to put the leaves on our tree. I'm gonna add an extra step by writing things that I'm grateful for on each leaf. This would be a super fun thing to do if you had a group of family and friends around, maybe a table, and you had just eaten a bunch of food, and you're all full, but you're not ready to leave yet. You could pass out a stack of leaves to everybody and write things you're grateful for. I don't even have one problem coming up with something I'm grateful for right now. It's not a something, it's a someone. Do you have any guesses? It's you, my friend. I am so glad that we're friends and that we get to be creative together, that we get to make things together and learn. Oh, it is the best hanging out with you. So my first leaf is going to say, my friend, and that's you. I'm gonna attach this leaf with a little bit of tape. You could use hot glue or glue dots, whatever, it will work. gratitude game you can play with friends and family later with this activity or you can just play with me right now or both why not ask a grown-up if they'll go to kyliemakesit.com and print off this gratitude list or you could just come up with your own use the scissors to cut out each item on the list once you have all 15 cut out fold them in half and put them in a container thanks Ash Brown for holding that now take turns drawing out a slip of paper read it out loud. This one says, someone funny. Now, the person who drew the paper has to think of someone they're grateful for who's also funny. <gasps> Can you think of someone? 
who is someone you are so thankful is in your life who is also hilarious? <laughs> I pick Dax. That guy is so funny. Okay, let's do that one. Okay. Ooh, what are you grateful for that is far away? Something far away. Oh, you know what? I know what mine is. I have a lot of family that live in a different state than I am. They're kind of far away from me, but I am so grateful for them. You know who you are. Another? Okay. Okay. This one says something outside. What's something that you're grateful for that's outside? I love it. You know what I'm grateful for that's outside? My big orange tree. I'm so grateful for those leaves. <gasps> something yellow. Can you think of something you're grateful for that's yellow? I pick bananas. I love bananas. Sometimes I cut them up and I put them on my cereal. Delicious. <laughs> Hi friends, it's me, Kylie. Welcome to my studio. Today, we are going to be using some unexpected materials, toilet paper, to make pumpkins. That's right, I'm gonna show you three ways to use toilet paper rolls to make these really fun autumn pumpkins together. You ready? Let's make it. First thing we need to do for each one of our crafts is to unroll some of the toilet paper off of the roll. You can do this the normal way or the mummy way. I vote mummy. Let's do it. was fun. For our first pumpkin, we're going to do a very easy and quick paper mache pumpkin. The first thing you need to do is break off your extra toilet paper. Then you're going to squish down your toilet paper roll a little bit to make it into more of a pumpkin shape than a straight cylinder. So I'm just going to squish down the edges a little bit. One thing that'll make squishing this down a little easier is to add some water. Whoa. All right. Now we're talking. I'm shaping this toilet paper roll with my hands, just like I would with a ball of clay. And you'll notice that when it gets wet, the texture, the consistency of the toilet paper changes. There we go, that's looking pumpkin-y. Look how smushing down the corners on the cylinder changed the shape of the toilet paper roll. Interesting. The next thing we're going to do is use some of the toilet paper that we unrolled around the edges of our pumpkin. Because if you notice, pumpkins have like little sections in them that are raised up. So I'm going to just tuck a piece in the top and then tuck it in the bottom. Keep doing that all the way around. All right. Now it kind of looks like a mummy pumpkin, doesn't it? Kind of like when we were wrapping ourselves up in toilet paper, this pumpkin got wrapped too. Now, we are going to add a paper mache glue with some paint in it. This is gonna save us a step because we won't need to wait for the paper mache to dry and then paint it and then wait for the paint to dry and blah, blah, blah. We're gonna put it all on at once so it all dries at once. Shortcut. Take a cup. Fill it with one part glue. To two parts water. A little bit of paint. 
Your pumpkin doesn't need to be orange. Maybe you want a purple pumpkin. Ooh, that's fun to say. Purple pumpkin, purple pumpkin, purple pumpkin. <laughs> then we're gonna mix this up. If you've ever done paper mache before, what you might imagine is taking strips of newspaper or thin paper and dipping it into glue and going like this and then putting it on. We don't have to do it that way with this because we're using this special toilet paper pumpkin. So all we need to do for this one is paint it on. Cover your whole pumpkin with your water, paint, and glue mixture. Doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, it can be pretty messy if you want it to be. I've covered my whole pumpkin with my glue and paint mixture. Now, I'm gonna put my pumpkin on a drying rack so that the bottom and the top dry. And this is where you can do a little bit more sculpting if you want to. I'm gonna go in and just press down the sections a little bit more just with my hand or you can use your brush. If that top layer rips at all, that's totally fine. It's toilet paper all the way through. So you just glue down the next layer. I love it. Now, if you want to add some stems or leaves or those cool vine curly cues that pumpkins have sometimes, you can do that too. All that you need to do is get a little toilet paper wet and you can use that to sculpt. There's a stem. You can make a leaf just by pressing some toilet paper together. Get it wet, mush, mush, mush. It kind of works just like clay. You can either make another paint mixture with the colors you want or add just water and glue to this so that when it dries, you can paint those separately. You know that I already have one dry for us to check out, don't you? Of course. I'm ready to hang out with you. Check it out! Here's one that I made without a stem and here's one I made with a stem and a curly cue and a leaf. And look, they're not mushy anymore. They had to dry for about 24 hours, but I did these just like I did that, and they turned out so cool. I'm going to finish painting them. This one, I'm gonna paint just like a pumpkin. This one, I think we'll put a face on. Let's do it. or stems on this one, I'm going to be using these stick bendy wire things I found in the floral department and some ribbon and some hot glue to add that part on. So I'm gonna bend my stick bendy thing. I'm sure there's a real name for it. Floral wire, maybe? Yeah. And then I'm gonna use this thinner green wire for the curly cue. Then I'm gonna cut some leaves out of this ribbon. I'm gonna cut a leafy shape. Kind of a pointy oval. I was gonna paint a face on this guy, but once I started gluing stuff, I just, I couldn't get enough. So instead, I'm gonna cut some shapes out of some craft foam. You could do this with felt or even just paper. And then I'm gonna glue that on instead, just cause we already painted one. 
might as well do a little more gluing, you know what I mean? All right, I'm gonna cut two triangles for the eyes. Maybe like a little semicircle for the nose. And then, how should our pumpkin be feeling? Because I think mostly you're gonna get this pumpkin's feelings through its mouth. Let's just go with uh, maybe a surprise face. To do a surprise face, we'll cut a little oval. Isn't it amazing what you can make with your imagination and a little bit of toilet paper and hot glue? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> cool. While I've got my hot glue out, I'm gonna show you how to make the second kind of pumpkin out of toilet paper. Toilet paper roll, gotta unroll it. Once you've unrolled it, you're gonna roll it back up, but you're gonna roll it kind of loose so that there's a little lump right in the middle. Again, to make it more of a pumpkin shape than the cylinder shape of the toilet paper roll. Now, for this one, you just need a square of fabric, about 18 to 22 inches. For my first one, I'm just gonna use this handkerchief. All right. Lay your fabric flat, and then put your toilet paper roll right in the middle. Great. Now, you wrap the fabric up and tuck it right into the hole of the toilet paper roll. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Then you can use a craft stick, or I went and found a stick from my yard. Stick it right down in the center for the stem. Doesn't this look amazing already? You can hot glue it there if you want, or you can just start decorating. I'm gonna do it the same way I did with this one. Little ribbon leaf, little curly cues. But that's it for this pumpkin. Super easy. That's it. Also, what's great about this pumpkin, if you ever run out of toilet paper, no, you didn't. <laughs> For our last toilet paper pumpkin, we're going to be using some yarn. Ah! Again, this is so fun because you don't have to paint it, but you can do lots of different colors. Also, you can use different thicknesses and textures of yarn to get a lot of different effects. What I'm going to do is just gather up a bunch of this leftover toilet paper and make it into a ball. You can make this however big or tiny you want it to be. I'm gonna start with my stem. You can use this floral craft wire or a stick that you find. But I'm just gonna get this started so that I can work it right in. You could also add this later, that would be totally fine. Then, you're just going to start wrapping your yarn around. That's it. Wrap, 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 wrap. I love fall. I love it for so many reasons. I always have. I wonder what your favorite season is. When you have all of the toilet paper covered and you like how, what size it is, you are just going to tuck that last bit of string underneath. And you can tie it in a knot to keep it nice and tight on the bottom. Cut off your extra. There you go. Our third toilet paper pumpkin. Can you believe that we made all of these pumpkins with the base of them being this? Amazing, right? It is incredible what you can make with some simple materials, a friend, and your imagination. Gobble, gobble. I am getting so excited for Thanksgiving. There's so many cool fall things that we get to think about at Thanksgiving, like turkeys and pumpkin pie. What I love most about Thanksgiving is that we get to practice being grateful. That means saying thank you for the things that we feel thankful for. I have an idea. Do you want to go to the studio real quick and learn how to make a turkey just like this with me? Let's go. Welcome to the studio. We are going to be making some little turkeys together today and I'm so excited about it. 
we're gonna be using something called polymer clay. It comes in a package like this. There's lots of different brands. Polymer clay is a plastic based clay and you can cook it in your oven. You don't even need a kiln to fire it. You just fire it on a low temperature in your oven. It's awesome. The thing about polymer clay that can be a little tricky at first is that it is kind of dry sometimes. So you need to soften it up. This is how it came out of the package. This is how it works best to sculpt it. Here's some tips on how to do that. I like to start by heating my polymer clay up with my hair dryer. Let's give it a try now. I'm gonna pick it up and knead it together with my fingers, which just means I'm gonna press it together. Pressing it together will loosen it up and make it softer. If you're finding that this is still pretty hard, you can add a little bit of Vaseline. It'll make it a little squishier when you're kneading it, but it'll help soften it up too. Squish, 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 squish. All right, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna mix my browns together. To make our turkey today, we're just going to make some different shapes. I'm gonna divide my first color, which I'm using brown, this will be the color of the body of my turkey and of the head. I'm gonna divide it into thirds. So here's a hole and I'm going to divide it into one, two, three. I'm gonna take one third and put it aside for the head and I'm gonna keep two thirds and roll it into a shape called an oval. There it is, my oval. That's the body of my turkey. Now I'm gonna make its head. I'm gonna roll this piece of clay into a circle. Now I'm gonna put my circle onto my oval and join them together. Our turkey needs a beak. I'm gonna use yellow clay for mine. I'm just gonna take a little bit and then shape it into a triangle. That's a triangle and it's a beak. I'm gonna put my beak on my turkey's face Perfect. Now, I'm going to make my turkey some eyes. I'm gonna start with white, and I'm gonna roll two small circles of clay. Whoa, those are some big eyes, turkey. Now I'm gonna roll two smaller balls of black. Next, I'm gonna put a little coil in each part of the black so it looks like his eyes are shiny and happy. Look how cute he is already. Next, we're gonna make him some little feet. I'm gonna use orange to do this. I'm gonna roll it into a circle and then just using a pencil or whatever you're using, I'm gonna take some clay out to make some pointy turkey claws on this guy. Sometimes in sculpture, you're adding things. Like we added the beak and the eyes, we added clay to make this sculpture. That's called additive sculpture. Sometimes in sculpture, you're taking things away. That's called subtractive sculpture, kind of like math. 
We're gonna make the feet with subtractive sculpture. We're gonna take away clay, and that's how we're gonna make our shape. Feet. Now, I'm gonna put this guy on his feet. We're gonna make some spots for feathers. I'm gonna use real feathers for my project. You could also make yours out of clay if you want. I can't bake my feathers in the oven because they would get too hot. So I'm gonna take them out and we'll put them back in once our turkey is all fired. I just got our turkey out of the oven. The clay is nice and hard now. I let it cool off so it's safe to touch and he's ready to get his feathers. If you wanted the feathers to stay in forever, you could put a little bit of glue in each of the feather holes that we made. I decided I'm not going to glue them in in case I ever want my turkey to have different colored turkey feathers. I'll just be able to switch them out. I'm just gonna put my feathers back in the holes that we made. And, ta-da! Hi friend, it's me, Kylie. I'm so excited to hang out with you today. And I'm double excited because there's something in our maker box. Oh! Can you guess what's in there? I can't. Let's open it up. It's a little tiny pumpkin. Oh, hello, little pumpkin. Oh, and a piece of paper. It has words on it. Let's read it. In the maker box today, you found a pumpkin and a clue. This is a clue. Now find another in a different box that starts with M too. Like the maker box, maker box. Okay, in the maker box today, you found a pumpkin and a clue. Now find another in a different box that starts with M too. This kind of sounds like um, a pumpkin treasure hunt. Do you want to go on a treasure hunt with me? You do? Yes. Okay, okay. Let's read our clue again because we need to figure it out. In the maker box today, you found a pumpkin and a clue. Now find another in a different box that starts with M too. Okay. So I think this means that if we find another box that starts with the letter M, we'll find another pumpkin maybe another clue. Do you know of another box that starts with the letter M? Hmm. Mmm, box. Mmm, box. Mmm, muffin box. Oh, I don't, I don't have a muffin box. Um, mm, mom, no. Mercury box. That would have to be very big. Um, mail. Mailbox. Mailbox. Do you think that's it? Let's go check it out. Come on. Mailbox. Clue. Pumpkin. <laughs> This is so fun. Let's read the next clue. You found me, you found me. I am orange and round. To find another pumpkin, find someone furry and brown. Someone furry that's the color brown. Do you know anyone furry around here? Hmm. I know. I know where the next pumpkin and the next clue are. We need to find Hash Brown the dog. Let's go. I see him 
and our pumpkin. Hi! Hash Brown the dog likes pumpkins, and he especially likes me. Now go find my other friends, friends, on what used to be a tree? Hash Brown, do you have any ideas? Well, most trees live outside. Let's go outside and look. Used to be a tree. I mean, here's a tree, but it's still a tree, you know? Used to be a tree. Pumpkin! Clue hoo! Hmm. What? You found something? Where? <laughs> of course! You are brilliant! The stump used to be a tree. And look, here's all the pumpkins. We found the pumpkin treasure. Let's load them up, take it to the studio, cut one open and see what's inside. You want to? Let's do it. That won't fit. Let's go. Hi, welcome to the studio. Let's open this pumpkin up and see what's inside. You're definitely going to want an adult to help you with this part because we're gonna use a very sharp knife to cut this very thick pumpkin shell. Okay, I cut all the way around top. Are you ready to take the top off? Oh, it's gooey and there's seeds inside. It smells pumpkin-y. Wow, I got all the pumpkin goo scooped out of the pumpkin. It feels really slimy. It's so beautiful, this light orange color. And do you see these seeds? Whoa. <laughs> this little Slippery pumpkin seed is how this huge pumpkin started. This little tiny seed got planted in the ground and it stayed underground and it drank some water up from the ground and it reached up toward the light and it came out of the ground as a plant. And then it grew and it grew and it grew and that's how this pumpkin was made. Isn't that amazing? And inside this pumpkin are all these seeds that would grow other pumpkins. That is the coolest. It reminds me about art a little bit. How just very simple things make all the different kinds of art. Like, think about a line. A line is just a dot that travels all the way to another dot. One simple line can make all of the shapes, it can make all the things that we draw. It's like a seed for art. I have an idea. What if we decorated all of these pumpkins with different kinds of lines? Do you wanna try it? Let's do it. We're gonna use puffy paint to decorate these pumpkins. And we're going to use just lines to do it. Let's see how many different kinds of lines we can think of when we decorate this big one. You know what? I see a line right away. I see a line that's part of the pumpkin. Look, it's a straight line and it goes up and down. That kind of line is called a vertical line. Let's make some vertical lines on this pumpkin. We covered the pumpkin with vertical lines. Now let's fill up these sections with different kinds of lines. What do you think? Hmm, we made lines that go up and down what if this time we made lines that went across like this? That's called a horizontal line. Let's do it. Oh, I have an idea. On this one, instead of going up and down vertical or across horizontal, let's go diagonal, which means it goes 
low to high or high to low, but also goes side to side. Let's try it. I love it. What other kind of line can we make? Oh, I know. How about a curved line that goes like this? Kind of like a rainbow. Cool. Um, that reminds me of a zigzag line. That looks like a lightning bolt. I have one spot left. For this one, let's do a squiggly line. Squiggle, 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 squiggle. I really like saying the word squiggle. Lots of times when people carve pumpkins, they carve faces into the pumpkins. We can make a lot of different faces using just lines. Faces can tell us a lot of things about how people are feeling, can't they? And we can use those faces and lines to make our pumpkins look like they're feeling different things. Let's start with happy. How do you think we would make this pumpkin look happy? Do you know what a happy face looks like? Try one. Yeah, you smile, your eyes get squinty. Let's draw a happy face on this pumpkin. We made two lines that met at the same point, which made a shape. We made two ovals for the eyes with lines. Now I'm gonna use two diagonal lines, one that goes up and one that goes down. This is gonna make it look like our pumpkin has eyelashes. So happy. We'll do a little nose with a curved line and then a big smile with two curved lines. Two more curved lines. And look at this happy, happy pumpkin. Let's make this pumpkin look sad. What does a face that looks sad look like? Instead of doing big open eyes, we're gonna do two curved lines, curving down, a little nose, and this time, a big curved line. Oh, for a sad little mouth. And maybe we'll draw a teardrop. Oh, little pumpkin, it'll be okay. How does this pumpkin look? I think this pumpkin looks peaceful. What does a peaceful face look like? Mm, maybe like this. Aww. This pumpkin looks a little worried to me. Do you ever get worried? What does that face look like? Maybe the eyes are just dots. Dot, dot. And then we're gonna give this worried person little eyebrows. Oh! And for their mouth, we're gonna make a, just a squiggly. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This pumpkin looks, I think, surprised. Have you ever been surprised? <gasps> Let's draw a surprised face on this pumpkin. We'll do little dots for eyes again. And little curved lines for eyebrows. Maybe two little dots for the nose. And then a big circle mouth. Whoa! Maybe he's surprised how surprised he looks. Let's make this pumpkin look silly. Can you make your silly face? Uh, uh, uh. That's such a good one. Okay, let's give this pumpkin a silly face with some lines. A half circle 
or a curved line for the eyes. A cute little nose, a big smile. And then we'll do another curved line and a diagonal line for a little tongue. Uh, oh, I know a big feeling we haven't talked about yet. Mad. Mad is another word for angry. This is what my angry face looks like. What does your angry face look like? My eyes kind of get scrunchy. My mouth kind of gets scrunchy. My nose gets scrunchy. I guess I get really scrunchy when I'm mad. Well, let's do some diagonal lines for scrunchy eyes. And then we'll do some big scrunchy eyebrows. Mad nose. And then we'll make a mad mouth. Ugh. Hey, I'm a pumpkin. I'm mad. You know, sometimes I just feel confused. Maybe I don't understand what my teacher's trying to say to me, or maybe I heard a new word and I didn't know what it meant, or maybe my friend's mad at me and I don't even know why. I'm just like, nothing really makes sense. I was very confused. All these pumpkins have faces made out of lines that show us different feelings. These are only eight different feelings, but there are so many different ways to feel. And it's important to think about how we feel so that we can tell other people and also so that we know. For example, maybe when we think about how we feel, we find out that we're actually really mad about something. If we know that, we can kind of take a minute and calm down a little bit. So we might still be mad, but we're not going to be mean or rude because we know we're mad. And so we can take a minute to calm down and be kind. All the feelings fit. All the feelings make sense. And it's good to know how you feel and it's good to know how other people feel so that you can be a good friend to them. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. What do you want to do today? Let's see if it's nice outside. It is! It's a beautiful day. I love the fall outside because the leaves are so pretty. You know what? He needs to go on a walk. Do you want to go on a walk with us? Let's do it. You ready? Let's go. What a beautiful day! I love taking walks in the fall. The leaves are all crunchy under your feet. Have you seen all of these leaves on the ground? Look at this one. It's yellow with brown spots and it comes to three triangle points. Ooh, this one's the same shape, but it's smaller and brown. This one is a different shape. It kind of looks like an oval with a point. I have an idea. While we're on this walk today with my dog, do you want to see how many different kinds of leaves we can find? Awesome, let's do it. Wow, look at this huge yellow leaf. I wonder what tree this came from. This one. Look, some of the leaves are still green. Some of them are turning yellow. Some of them are very yellow. And then this one fell off. Let's see what other kind of leaves we can find right here. Ooh, look at this brown spiky one. I wonder if this came off of this tree. Look, all the leaves fell off of it already. Keep looking. I 
see you. Friends, there is the coolest leaf right down there. Isn't it awesome? We're gonna have to be very brave and climb down to get it. Hash brown, are you feeling brave? Let's go. Whoa. Oh, yes. Got it. It's huge. Oh, and look at this little baby one right next to it. I wonder if they're friends. Wow, look at this bright red leaf. I love it. Do you see any red trees around here? Way up there. I love all these different colors we're finding. I love leaves. I have a great idea. Why don't we go back to my studio and we can make some paintings of leaves inspired by these leaves that we found. Do you want to? All right, let's go. Welcome to the studio. I'm so excited to paint today. Today we're going to be painting with watercolor paints based on these really awesome leaves that we found on our leaf hunt. We're not just making any watercolor paintings today. We're making paintings on watercolor cards. That's right. When these paintings are all done and dry, I'm going to put them in the mail and send them to some very special friends of mine. I'm so excited. I really think they're going to like them. The first thing we need to do for each card is to take the shape of the leaf and trace it onto our paper, just like this. Watercolors come in two different forms. There's watercolors that are hard and they each have their own little well. See all these colors? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, and black. When I paint with these kind of watercolors, I like to put some water in before I start painting so that they get nice and soft. The other kind of watercolor that you can buy comes in tubes like this. You just need to squirt out a very little bit of it because this paint goes a long way. Since there's no white in my palette, I'm going to add a little bit of white from my tube onto this palette so we can use that too. Don't need very much. All right, let's start. How would you describe the color or hue, which is just another word for color, of this leaf? It's kind of yellow. I see a little orange, but these colors are darker than this color. Let's think about how we would mix the paint to be this color. Let's start with yellow. Next, I'm going to add in a little bit of orange because there's kind of some orange hue to this leaf. Oh, look, we're getting closer, but we need this color to be a little lighter. So we need to add white. When you add white to a hue, you're making something called a tint. We're going to add a little bit of white and see what happens. Oh, look, that tint of that hue is pretty perfect. Let's paint our leaf with it. Awesome. We painted this leaf to match the hue of this leaf. We painted the lightest color but there are some darker colors in here. Light and dark and everything in between is something in art we call value. What is the value of this leaf? It's light because we used a tint, but there are some darker values in this leaf. So I'm gonna mix up hues that are the same color, but different values, watch. So we started the hue with yellow and then we added just a little bit of orange whoa that was too much that's okay we'll start again yellow and then we'll take a little bit of that color if i don't add any white to this it's just this cool hue let's do a little bit of painting with this hue 
we made a tint for the lightest color of this leaf, and we left the hue for the middle color of this leaf, but we need an even darker color. Do you know how to make that? You guessed it, we need to add a little black. This is our hue, and we're going to take just a little bit of black and we're gonna add it in. Whoa, it's perfect, look. That is called making a shade when you add black to a color. Here we go. I think it looks incredible. Let's move on to our next leaf. This leaf is red, that's the hue. Let's start there. I'm gonna get a little bit of red and put it on my palette. Now, is this hue lighter or darker than the leaf? This hue is a little lighter than this leaf, and the leaf is a little darker than the hue. So we're going to add a little bit of black. That'll make a shade. A little bit of black. Let's try it. Ah, <gasps> perfect. With this leaf, we made a shade because the leaf is dark. We added some black to red and we made a color called maroon, which is a shade of red. This is fun. This leaf is lighter on the top and darker on the bottom. That's two different kinds of values, light and dark. When things go dark to light or light to dark, we call it a gradient. That's something that you can do with value. You can change it up. Let's paint this and make a gradient. Time for our last leaf. This leaf is mostly light green. Green, that's light. But I also see some dark brown spots. When you have two values next to each other, one that's very light and one that's very dark, that's something that we call contrast. Let me make a contrast with sound so that you can experience it. Here's a contrast between a quiet sound and a loud sound, ready? That's a contrast. Mm -hmm. Try it. We're going to take green and make a tint because this is pretty light. So we're gonna add some white. And this is a kind of yellowy green, so let's add some yellow too. Perfect. I am light green. I am a light green leaf. Time to add some contrast. Look at that contrast. Love it. The last thing I'm gonna do for these cards is put in a background color. You don't need to do this part if you don't want to. I love painting with you. I love these paintings we made together. But the next part is my favorite part. We made this art and now we're gonna share it. Our cards are all ready to go. They're dry and I signed each painting. I'm going to write the name of my friend on this part of the envelope. This one's going to my friend, Etta. I wrote her name, E-T-T-A, right on the envelope. Then I'm gonna write her address right here. The other thing I need to do is put my name and address up here. Kylie, K-Y-L-E-E. -E. The stamp goes up here. That tells the post office that we are all good to mail this letter from my house to my friend's house. I'm gonna put the cards in the rest of the envelopes and then um, do you wanna go to my mailbox with me? Let's do it. We're here at the mailbox. A letter for Roman, Ben, Emma, and Etta. I 
love hanging out with you no matter what season it is, but there's something special about the fall. Also, our pumpkins are dry. Before you seal them, you have to make sure to keep them very flat so your seeds don't fall off. But after they're sealed, like this one is, look, those seeds all stay on. You can seal these with a clear glue or Mod Podge. This is a Mod Podge that sprays on and it doesn't smell bad, which is a win, win, win. Get a nice thick coat on so you can keep all of your seeds on. Let it dry for about four hours. And these are ready to decorate with. Thanks so much for crafting and hanging out with me today. If you wanna see more videos like this one, just search for Kylie Makes It, K-Y-L-E-E, -E. that's me. I'll see you soon.